What's good YouTube? Nobody here. Welcome to the Nanobot Build and Repair System tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through everything that there is to know about na uh, Nanobot Build and Repair System, including all of the features, what the status lights mean, uh, setup for the grouping in the script, and multiple different uses that you can use it for. So to get started, if you haven't already, you need to go to uh, your mods section here if you have already subscribed to Nanobot build and repair if not the link will be in the description down below and you can pick it up from there once you've installed it into your mods you can hit ok and then you also if you're going to be using the script that comes with it which is very useful link in the description you'll have to come down as well and choose in-game scripts right here which i have already chosen so in order to use nanobot build and repair effectively you actually need to understand what it's capable of doing so the first thing that we're going to talk about here is is walk mode versus fly mode now this is very important it's according to what you want to do to which one you want to use walk mode here will allow you to build from the connected grid up and fly mode will allow you to build from the top down so your choice here kind of matters too so you're going to either choose nearest first furthest first or smallest grid first these will allow you to choose what direction things get built in or ground in so with this we're going to go for furthest first and we are going to make sure it is in walk mode so let's go ahead and get this one set up and i will do a quick time lapse of it building so you can see the direction in which it builds building the inside first and then out So as you saw on the time lapse, it'll actually build from the inside out in this mode. Next is going to be fly mode. The way this works is it will actually allow you to build things that are not connected to your current grid or not already welded to your current grid. So when your objects are connected to the grid, it doesn't actually matter whether you do fly or walk mode. When fly mode comes in handy is when you have grid or when you want to print a grid that is not attached to your current grid that's when you'll want to use fly mode or you'll want to use fly mode when you want to build or dismantle something that is not attached to your grid such as a ship that you're printing but when they are attached to your current grid as you see both act the same So the next option is weld before grind versus grind before weld. So what I have set up here is I have one side set up to be ground down using grind color, which I will explain in a second, and one set up built to be created. Now this will allow you to choose the order in which things get built versus ground down. So it, this can be a useful setting for multiple different times, whether you're using it for base defense or something like that, it's useful. And also if you're trying to move, say you're trying to move a, a storage unit from one area to another, this is a useful way to do it. I have the options for this one set to weld before grind. So the way this is going to work is it's going to weld up these new ones before it grinds down the old ones here. I have this green set up as my weld or my grind color. The way you want to do this is you want to pick a color that you do not ever use in your builds and you're going to want to set that as your grind color so you can tell build and repair and to actually grind things as you need it to. So the way you do this is you go down to settings for welding and under there you will see settings for grinding. You choose use grind color and you can pick current build color. It has a purple already set originally. You can also use set build color to set your build color or set the build color that you have to whatever your color is that's pretty useful now note it does actually replace inside of your color picker with whatever you use so if you're on the red here it will actually choose the color and change that swatch into the color that you're choosing so be aware of that this one should build these blocks and then grind down the green here. Note it'll finish completely building the gray blocks before it grinds down the green blocks. There's also an option for grind if well gets stuck. Basically what this will do is if you run out of materials it'll start grinding whatever you have set up for it to grind as well while it's trying to get the materials up for the welding. You can also set this for welding only 
and grinding only, which are pretty self-explanatory. Note that build and repair is actually confined to the area where this blackish box is. You can actually adjust this box by using two different ways. You can either go inside of the control panel here and adjust it the same way you can adjust any other box with the horizontal, vertical, forward, offset, area width, area height, area depth. And you can even change the sound volume here, which I recommend, by the way, it's very loud. Or you can go in and do it just like you can with projectors from a control seat, such as this one right here. So the way you'll do this, you can bring your G menu up and you'll choose your build and repair. Let me figure out which one this is. This is number five. Let's go for C. I'll just rename it in order to figure out which one it is. And we can change the build area for it using your standard setup. So we'll go in and we'll find build and repair C, this one right here. And then we drag it down onto our bar. Then we can choose any of the options that we have. So. The way to do this one is you'll set this up to do area, offset, left, right, increase. Then set it up for each of the options as you normally would. Set each of these increase, decrease options on your bar. The way I like to do it is I like to do the area increases and decreases on one bar and the placement adjustments on another bar. That way you can keep track of what's what. A lot easier and now you can use the options on the bar to change your build area however you choose you can move it around you can make it bigger smaller any of the stuff you want to do that's the way I recommend it because you can actually get a view from the outside you can also set an ignore color as well so say you want to build I'm gonna choose a red ignore color here so say you want to build an item that doesn't get built. So a lot of people like to use unbuilt tires as a way to hold something. You can actually set an ignore color for this. So what we'll do is we'll go through and we will choose under settings for welding, use ignore color and pick current build color. So anything that we build here in this ignore color will not be built. It will just be left as is. Now, if we change the color, it will actually build. However, I do not have the option or the stuff in this one to build it. So that's how you build a frame without actually building it. This also has a janitor feature, which is very, very useful. Say you have a full inventory and you want to drop something on the ground, but you don't feel like running all the way back to the base to, to drop it. You can just drop it here and it'll actually come pick it up for you using the janitor. There we go. It will do that for any floating objects. Say something breaks or you misplace a block. We all do this a lot. Accidentally place a block in the sky. It'll actually come pick this up. There we go. It will do that for stone, anything. Anything that's on the ground at all that's just floating, it will pick up. Any grid that doesn't have an owner or object that is sitting on the ground. Now comes one of the most useful features of build and repair. You can use it to 3D print objects. In order to do this, you're going to need to set up your script and you will also need to set yourself for fly mode. Fly mode is very important here because this will allow you to do things that are not connected to your current grid. If you're doing a small grid ship, you'll need fly mode because if you remember, this rotor here is connected to the base, but this rotor head is a new grid. Therefore, this small grid here is not connected to the base. So it would not actually print if it was on walk mode because it would have to be connected to the base. This is where walk mode versus fly mode actually comes in handy. So what we need to do here is we need to actually set up our script. So in order to do this, I'll actually walk you through the entire process. You will need to be subscribed to the script for it made by the author of build and repair. And then you will, you'll want to go to a programmable block and hit edit. Then you'll browse scripts and find that script in your script list. Sorry, I have so many here. Once you find the nanobot build and repair system queuing slash display slash scripting, you click on that and you copy to editor. Now there's one very important thing here. You'll need to come down here and look at your system uh, queuing groups. And this is actually very important if you're 3D print printing. You'll notice that there is a build and repair system group name here and an assembler group name. These 
need to be taken care of. You actually need to choose whatever's in here, copy by using control C and check code and hit okay. So now we have loaded the entire script into the programmable block. Now that we know what we need for the build and repair system, you need to choose the one that is connect or that you need and put this into a block group. So we only need the seat to be in this uh, group. If you have more than one build and repair unit that you wanna use for say a hangar bay, where you can build and repair your ships, you'll wanna group all of these together and then you're gonna need assemblers that will group with them as well. So you need a build and repair group for it. And then we go back into the programmable block here and edit. We need to get assembler group one as well. And then you choose the assembler that, or assembler or assemblers that you want to use. In this case, assembler one and, or assembler and assembler two, I have set up for this purpose. So we'll actually save this into assembler group one. Now, these right here, these two groups, build and repair group one and build and repair group two are now connected to this programmable block. This programmable block will actually control both the assemblers and the build and repair units attached to it. So now that we have that done, if we want to build what's inside of here, all we have to do is turn this block on. Now, note that I do not have the individual components in here. I actually have silicon wafer, sil silver ingot, iron ingot, gold ingot, cobalt ingot, and platinum ingot, 10K each. What's gonna happen here is it's only going to create what it needs in order to build this design. So when I hit on, it should find the item within. Okay, so Needler large cargo container. So it will actually build this by actually creating the items inside of the assemblers that it needs. If we watch, you'll also need to uncheck controlled by script on this. I do not know why this is the case, but this has been fixing it for me the last few days. So it's missing two interior plates, which it's making. So now it's making all the items that it needs to make in these assemblers, and it is actually creating them in order to build the system. The way the script seems to be working here is it's actually building the steel plates first in the assemblers, all the steel plates that are necessary, and it's placing all of them. If you notice, some items are not completed while others are and it's all steel plates every single bit of this so far so it looks like it creates each item down a list so if you need steel plates it'll do all of those first and if you need motors it'll do those next i'm not sure the exact order it goes in i would have to contact the mod author about that but he does have an order that it goes in my guess is that it'll do steel plates and then it will do interior plates as well to start with that way it can place everything now times like this can actually be a good use for the weld before grind option. So if we go through here and we do weld before grind, okay, we have it set up for weld before grind. It will actually, the way this will work is it will only weld first and then it'll grind anything that you have for, set for your grind color. So we're gonna go ahead and set this for the grind color. Say we wanted to get rid of this little arm here after we create our ship, we can come through and change that. So this will actually weld everything up before it ever grinds anything. So after the ship's been finished, it will actually auto disconnect it from the grid and get rid of the arm for holding it. And the ship is done. As you notice, it built the ship and then ground down the green. So now the ship is completely on its own. Let me go ahead and land this so it doesn't go crashing later. And that brings me to the next point. As you've seen, you can use Nanobot Build and Repair for building. You can also use it for offensive and defensive purposes as well. What I've done here is I've spawned in a ship and I've changed the ownership to Space Pirates. So it is now hostile to me. I can take this ship here, hop in here. I'm gonna have to go through and change the build and repair. If you choose the option, janitor grinds on enemy blocks, you can change it to enemy blocks, not owned blocks and neutral blocks if you want to. So you can choose either one of these. I'm gonna set it to all. You can either choose to disable or hack as well. These are your offensive capabilities. If you're looking to hack a ship and you want to do it quickly, this is a good way to do it. Just grind it and then run around and fix it all. So once you get it to hack, you can actually fix it. So we're going to hack the ship real quick. We're going to grind to hack only and we will go into setup. We have it set up now. So what we're going to do is we're going to move in on this ship in this huge ship that I have built here. 
and then we are going to change the mode to fly mode. What this is going to do is it's actually going to grind down this ship here to hack it all. It's grinding down every block on this ship to hack. And then I can go back in and then just wait and it will actually hack every single one of those blocks on the ship. So what it's doing now is it is actually repairing all of the blocks that it hacked and changing ownership to me because I own these blocks. So you can actually hack an entire ship using this very quickly and effectively. I do believe it's lost some components here. Yes it has. As you see it's actually completely hacked the ship and stolen the ship for us. We now own the ship again. It's no longer belonging to the space pirates. Everything is ours. So it will do your hack and grind for you pretty quickly, I might add, if you set up enough of them. You can also use it to disable enemy ships during combat. So if they get within range of your build and repair units, it will disable them as well. And you can also choose to grind down enemy blocks. So I've given the ship back to the space pirates again, and we're going to grind it down. Just to show you, you can grind enemy blocks completely down. In order to do that, you'll choose fly mode and janitor grinds enemy blocks and make sure that neither grind to disable or hack only is chosen. This will actually take all the resources and put them in our storage. There we go. For this, I actually recommend going in changing to closest first instead of furthest first. That way you don't have it jumping around on you. It'll actually choose the blocks that are closest to you first to grind and leave the ones on the bottom. I was too late on that. If you notice, I also have a projector on this ship. The reason why is because build and repair works very well for defending your ship as well. It's almost like a, a welding shield. Let me grab a gun. Now if we fire on the ship, you'll notice build and repair will fix it. You can also try to grind the ship and build and repair will fix it if it has the materials. There you go. So it works as a sort of shield to keep you from being taken over. Thank you for watching the video all the way through. If you haven't already, think about dropping a like to let me know that you did. If you want to see more build and repair in action, you can check out my series, Automating an Empire, where we use build and repair on a regular basis. If you're new here and you haven't already, how about thinking about subscribing and help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click one of the two videos on your screen now. Thank you. Have a nice day.